The annals of military history are marked not only by triumphs, but also by crushing defeats, events that have forever altered empires, nations, and the lives of millions. This video delves into the 15 worst military defeats in history, each a cautionary tale of tactical blunders, intelligence failures, or simply fate favoring the underdog. The stories that follow offer lessons in the high stakes of warfare and the often devastating consequences of mistakes. Number 1. Battle of Cannae, 216 BC. The Battle of Cannae stands as one of the most devastating defeats in military history, a clash that demonstrated the brilliance of Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca against a vastly superior Roman force. Taking place during the Second Punic War, the engagement unfolded near the village of Cannae in southeastern Italy. Rome was desperate to quell the Carthaginian threat that had boldly crossed the Alps and was ravaging the Italian peninsula. A Roman army boasting an estimated 86,000 soldiers led by consuls Lucius Aemilius Paulus and Gaius Terentius Varro faced Hannibal's considerably smaller force of around 50,000. The Roman strategy was straightforward, use their numerical advantage to crush the Carthaginian center. Hannibal, fully aware of this likely approach, engineered a tactical masterpiece. He positioned his troops in a crescent formation with the weaker forces in the middle and stronger forces on the wings. As the Roman legions pushed against the Carthaginian center, Hannibal's wings folded in, enveloping the Roman forces in a classic pincer movement known as a double envelopment. The Roman soldiers found themselves trapped, unable to maneuver or even effectively wield their weapons due to the tight encirclement. What followed was a massacre. An estimated 75,000 Roman soldiers were killed and another 10,000 captured. Hannibal's losses were comparatively minimal, estimated at around 6,000. The defeat shook Rome to its core, but also showcased the limitations of relying solely on numerical superiority. Hannibal's genius lay not just in understanding how to break the Roman phalanx, but in psychologically manipulating his enemy into a tactical blunder of disastrous proportions. Despite this monumental victory, Hannibal did not march on Rome, a decision that has been the subject of debate among historians. Some argue that he lacked the necessary resources, while others suggest that he never intended to conquer Rome, but rather to weaken it sufficiently to sue for peace. Regardless, the Battle of Cannae remains a seminal moment in military history, a grim example of tactical ingenuity triumphing over numerical might, and its lessons continue to be studied in military academies around the world to this day. Number 2. Battle of Teutoburg Forest, 9 AD in the annals of Rome's illustrious military history, the Battle of Teutoburg Forest stands out as a dark chapter that exposed the vulnerabilities of an empire stretching itself too thin. The defeat came at the hands of Germanic tribes led by Arminius, a chieftain who had once served as a Roman auxiliary and was thus deeply familiar with Roman military tactics. His betrayal would lead to one of the most disastrous defeats the Roman Empire ever faced. Rome was intent on expanding its control into Germania, and its governor, Publius Quinctilius Varus led three legions, totaling nearly 20,000 men, through the Teutoburg Forest, a dense woodland that stretched across what is now northwestern Germany. Varus was confident, but woefully misinformed. Arminius had convinced him that the Germanic tribes were friendly and that he could march his legions through the forest without concern. But it was a trap. As the Roman legions traversed the narrow, muddy pathways of the forest, Arminius's forces launched a series of guerrilla attacks. Heavy rain and the densely wooded terrain rendered Roman artillery and formations ineffective. Stretched out and unable to form a defensive perimeter, the legions were picked off piece by piece. Over the course of three fateful days, all three Roman legions were annihilated. The loss was catastrophic. Nearly 20,000 Roman soldiers were killed, and Varus himself committed suicide to avoid capture. The defeat had lasting repercussions. It halted Roman expansion into Germania, and the psychological impact was immense, casting a long shadow over Rome's perception of its own invincibility. The Roman historian Suetonius would later report that Emperor Augustus, deeply shaken by the defeat, would wander his palace shouting, Varus, give me back my legions! This was not just a military defeat, it was a psychological and symbolic one. For years afterward, new Roman recruits were sworn in with the cautionary words, Remember Varus, a testament to the enduring impact of the disastrous Battle of Teutoburg Forest. Number 3. Siege of Constantinople, 1453. 
The fall of Constantinople in 1453 was more than just a military defeat. It marked the end of an era, serving as the death knell for the Byzantine Empire and paving the way for the rise of the Ottoman Empire. For more than a millennium, Constantinople had been an impregnable fortress, the gateway between Europe and Asia, and the seat of Orthodox Christianity. Its walls had repelled numerous sieges, but by the 15th century the city was a shadow of its former self, surrounded by the rapidly expanding Ottoman Turks led by Sultan Mehmed II. Mehmed, also known as Mehmed the Conqueror, was determined to capture Constantinople, and he brought overwhelming force to bear. His army was estimated to be between 80,000 and 200,000 strong, equipped with heavy artillery, including a colossal cannon capable of hurling stone balls weighing 600 pounds. Byzantine Emperor Constantine Palaiologos had at his disposal only about 7,000 to 10,000 defenders, many of whom were volunteers and non-combatants. The conquest had immediate and long-lasting effects. It shifted the balance of power in the region, and secured Ottoman control over key trade routes. Furthermore, it symbolized the final collapse of the Roman Empire, a continuum that had lasted for nearly two millennia. It sparked a mass exodus of scholars to the West, contributing to the Renaissance. For centuries to come, the siege of Constantinople would be studied as a lesson in how even the mightiest fortresses can fall when time, technology, and tenacity conspire against them. Number four. Battle of Plassey, 1757. The Battle of Plassey in 1757 is often cited as the starting point for British rule in India, a seismic shift that laid the foundation for the establishment of the British East India Company as a dominant colonial power. The battlefield was situated near the village of Plassey in Bengal, an incredibly lucrative province for trade. At the center of this military confrontation were Robert Clive, the British commander, and Siraj ud Dawla, the Nawab of Bengal. Despite the numerical superiority of the Nawab's forces, estimated to be around 50,000 compared to Clive's 3,000, the battle did not play out as one might expect based on numbers alone. As the hours ticked by, it became evident that the Nawab's forces were not fully committed to the fight. Sensing betrayal and a weakening resolve among his troops, Siraj ud Dawla retreated, leading to a catastrophic collapse in morale and eventual defeat. The aftermath of the Battle of Plassey was transformative. Mir Jafar was installed as the Nawab of Bengal, but was essentially a puppet ruler under British control. The British East India Company gained unparalleled power and privilege, including the right to collect taxes directly from the people of Bengal. The Battle of Plassey thus marked a significant milestone in the advent of British colonialism in India, a turn of events propelled not just by military prowess, but by cunning diplomacy, subterfuge, and betrayal. It was a lesson in how battles could be won as much in the drawing room as on the battlefield. Number 5. Battle of Saratoga, 1777. The American Revolution was a struggle that, in its early stages, seemed tilted in favor of the well-trained, well-funded British military. However, the Battle of Saratoga dramatically turned the tide, not just on the battlefield, but also on the international stage, where it made a compelling case for the viability of the American cause. British General John Burgoyne led an ambitious campaign to isolate New England from the rest of the colonies by cutting through upstate New York. However, logistical challenges and tactical missteps plagued his advance. Besieged and isolated, Burgoyne had no choice but to surrender on October 17, 1777, following failed attempts to break through American lines. His capitulation resulted in the capture of nearly 6,000 British troops and a vast supply of military equipment. The immediate consequence of Saratoga was electrifying. For the first time, it became clear that the American colonial army was capable of defeating the British in a large set-piece battle. The ramifications extended far beyond the American continent. News of the American victory swiftly crossed the Atlantic, and France, which had been cautiously observing the conflict, now recognized the United States and entered the war as an American ally. This international support provided essential military and financial aid to the American Revolution, substantially contributing to its eventual success. Saratoga was thus not just a military victory, 
It was the linchpin that transformed a colonial rebellion into a global conflict, fundamentally altering the course of American and world history. Number 6. Battle of Austerlitz, 1805. The Battle of Austerlitz, often referred to as the Battle of the Three Emperors, remains one of the most celebrated military victories in history, primarily because of the tactical genius displayed by Napoleon Bonaparte. Fought on December 2, 1805, the battle pitted the French army under Napoleon against the Russian and Austrian forces led by Tsar Alexander I and Holy Roman Emperor Francis II. It was a defining moment in the War of the Third Coalition, with the European powers eager to halt Napoleon's ambitions of territorial expansion. The Allied forces were caught in disarray, and their attempts to reunify were thwarted by timely French attacks. By the end of the day, the Allied army was effectively crushed, suffering heavy casualties and losing strategic positions. The French, on the other hand, had won a resounding victory with relatively minimal losses. Austerlitz was a masterclass in the use of deception, speed, and audacity. It confirmed Napoleon's reputation as one of the greatest military commanders in history. The battle had far-reaching consequences. It effectively dismantled the Third Coalition against France and led to the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire. For years afterward, the tactics employed at Austerlitz were studied by military leaders and strategists, exemplifying how tactical brilliance could overcome numerical disadvantages and change the course of history. Number 7. Battle of Trafalgar, 1805. One of the most pivotal naval battles in history, the Battle of Trafalgar had profound implications not only for the Napoleonic Wars, but also for the balance of naval power for the century to come. Fought off the coast of Cape Trafalgar, Spain on October 21, 1805, this confrontation involved the British Royal Navy, commanded by Admiral Lord Nelson, and the combined fleets of France and Spain, led by Admiral Pierre-Charles Villeneuve. The battle was essentially a preemptive strike by the British to thwart Napoleon Bonaparte's plans of invading Britain. The Battle of Trafalgar effectively ended any immediate threat of a Napoleonic invasion of Britain and established British naval supremacy in the Atlantic. The psychological impact was equally potent, instilling a sense of invincibility in the British Navy that would last for decades. The blockade imposed on French ports hamstrung Napoleon's maritime trade, straining the French economy and limiting the effectiveness of French naval power for the remainder of the Napoleonic Wars. Trafalgar was a decisive engagement that showcased the importance of naval power in determining geopolitical outcomes, and it immortalized Nelson as one of the greatest naval commanders in history. Number 8. Battle of Little Bighorn, 1876. The Battle of Little Bighorn remains one of the most iconic defeats for the United States military, serving as a powerful symbol of Native American resistance against westward expansion. On June 25th, 26, 1876, Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer led the 7th Cavalry into the Little Bighorn Valley in Montana Territory, aiming to subdue a coalition of Lakota, Northern Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes. Contrary to Custer's estimates, the Native American forces, led by prominent leaders like Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, and Gaul, numbered in the thousands, vastly outnumbering Custer's 600 men. The immediate aftermath of Little Bighorn was a surge in military action against Native American tribes involved in the battle. It hardened resolve among American authorities to confine Native Americans to reservations and to break any form of resistance to federal policies designed to assimilate them into American society. While the tribes celebrated their victory, they also knew that it would lead to intensified military campaigns against them. The Battle of Little Bighorn continues to captivate imaginations as a cautionary tale of hubris, poor planning, and the dangers of underestimating one's enemy. For Native Americans, it remains a somber but proud symbol of a fleeting triumph against the overwhelming forces that would soon dramatically alter their way of life. Number 9. Battle of Tsushima, 1905. The Russo-Japanese War was a watershed moment in military history, marking the emergence of Japan as a formidable naval power. Among the engagements of this war, the Battle of Tsushima stands out as a decisive defeat for the Russian Navy, with repercussions echoing throughout the 20th century. The battle took place on May 27, 28, 1905, 
in the Straits between Korea and Japan. It featured a confrontation between the Russian Baltic Fleet, commanded by Admiral Zinovy Rozestvensky, and the Imperial Japanese Navy, led by Admiral Togo Haihachiro. The Japanese ships executed a series of precise maneuvers that encircled and isolated parts of the Russian fleet, gradually whittling it down. By the time night fell, several Russian ships were sinking, and Rozestvensky himself was severely wounded. The following day, the remaining Russian ships were either sunk or captured, marking an overwhelming victory for the Japanese. The Battle of Tsushima was a humiliation for Russia and a demonstration of Japan's newly acquired naval prowess. It led to the signing of the Treaty of Portsmouth, brokered by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, and established Japan as a dominant power in East Asia. The engagement also signaled a transition in naval warfare, emphasizing the importance of speed, heavy artillery, and tactical planning. Tsushima shattered the myth of Western invincibility, heralding the arrival of new global players in the theater of war. Number 10. Gallipoli Campaign, 1915 to 1916. The Gallipoli Campaign was an ill-fated Allied operation during World War I that aimed to capture the Ottoman capital of Constantinople, now Istanbul, and secure a sea route to Russia. Orchestrated primarily by Winston Churchill, then First Lord of the Admiralty, the campaign was plagued by poor planning, logistical shortcomings, and a gross underestimation of Ottoman military capabilities. British, French, Australian, and New Zealand troops, the latter two famously known as the Anzacs, faced a well-fortified, tenacious Ottoman defense led by Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who would later become the founder and first president of modern Turkey. The campaign began on April 25, 1915, with amphibious landings on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Almost immediately, the inadequacy of Allied intelligence became apparent. The troops encountered steep cliffs, rugged terrain, and resilient Ottoman defenders who repelled the invaders with machine guns and artillery. Despite the bravery displayed by the Anzacs and other Allied troops, the initial assaults failed to make significant headway. Finally, recognizing the futility of the campaign, the Allies began evacuating in December 1915, completing the withdrawal by January 1916. The Gallipoli campaign resulted in over 100,000 deaths and hundreds of thousands of wounded, with no tangible gains for the Allies. It was a severe blow to Allied morale and led to significant political repercussions, including the sidelining of Churchill. On the other side, the Ottoman Empire scored a significant victory, bolstering national pride and solidifying Ataturk's reputation as a military hero. Number 11. Battle of Stalingrad, 1942 to 1943. The Battle of Stalingrad was a turning point in World War II and one of the most devastating military defeats in history for the Axis powers. Lasting from August 23, 1942 until February 2, 1943, this engagement pitted the invading German army and its allies against the Soviet Union in the city of Stalingrad, a strategic location on the western bank of the Volga River. Led by Generals Vasily Chuikov for the Soviets and Friedrich Paulus for the Germans, the battle was marked by its brutal urban warfare, massive casualties, and a bitterly cold Russian winter. The Germans initially made significant gains, capturing most of the city and forcing the Soviets into a small pocket along the Volga. However, the Russian resolve proved unbreakable, and despite being outnumbered and outgunned, they held on. The Soviets used the ruined city to their advantage, engaging in house-to-house, room-to-room fighting, making any advancement a costly endeavor for the Germans. Hitler's order for the German Sixth Army not to retreat, no matter the circumstances, further trapped them in a deteriorating situation. The Battle of Stalingrad became a symbol of Russian resilience and military capability. It was also a testament to the dangers of overreaching in warfare, as the German army never recovered from this catastrophic defeat, both in terms of manpower and morale. Number 12. Battle of Singapore, 1942. The fall of Singapore in 1942 stands as one of the most stunning defeats for the British Empire during World War II shattering the myth of British invincibility in Asia. Situated at the tip of the Malay Peninsula, 
Singapore was a critical naval base and was often referred to as an impregnable fortress by British leaders. However, this fortress fell to Japanese forces in just seven days. From February 8th to February 15th, 1942, under the command of Lieutenant General Arthur Percival for the British and General Tomoyuki Yamashita for the Japanese. Upon reaching Singapore, Japanese forces quickly gained air and artillery superiority, which allowed them to pressure the already beleaguered British, Australian, and Indian troops. A series of tactical blunders, including the dispersal of forces and lack of coordinated counterattacks, compounded the deteriorating situation for the Allies. Food and water shortages, as well as low morale, further plagued the defending troops. On February 15th, Percival formally surrendered to Yamashita, marking the largest capitulation in British military history. Around 80,000 British, Australian, and Indian troops became prisoners of war, many of whom faced brutal conditions in captivity. The loss of Singapore had a seismic impact on the British Empire and the Allied position in Asia. It provided Japan with a strategic base for further expansions in Southeast Asia and significantly damaged British prestige. Moreover, it forced a re-evaluation of colonial relationships and hastened the decolonization process in post-war Asia. The fall of Singapore remains a classic study in military unpreparedness, complacency, and the perils of underestimating one's opponent. Number 13, Bay of Pigs Invasion, 1961. The Bay of Pigs Invasion was a failed military operation aimed at overthrowing Cuban leader Fidel Castro. Orchestrated by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, and executed on April 17, 1961, the invasion serves as a glaring example of misguided policy, inadequate planning, and overconfidence. About 1,400 Cuban exiles, trained and funded by the CIA, formed Brigade 2506. They were expected to land in Cuba, ignite a popular uprising, and swiftly remove Castro from power. President John F. Kennedy, new in office, approved the plan, but was hesitant to provide overt American military support, fearing escalation and Soviet retaliation. The Bay of Pigs invasion had numerous repercussions. It was a propaganda coup for Fidel Castro, who used the failed invasion to solidify his regime and strengthen ties with the Soviet Union, eventually leading to events like the Cuban Missile Crisis. For the United States, the Bay of Pigs was a humiliating failure that damaged its reputation in the Western Hemisphere and beyond. Kennedy publicly accepted responsibility for the fiasco, and the incident led to a re-evaluation of covert operations by the CIA. The Bay of Pigs serves as a cautionary tale about the risks of interventionist foreign policy conducted without thorough planning or realistic objectives. Number 14. Operation Market Garden, 1944. Operation Market Garden, taking place from September 17 to 25, 1944, was an ambitious Allied plan aimed at hastening the end of World War II by capturing key bridges in the Netherlands and establishing a route across the Rhine into Germany. Devised by British Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, the operation combined an airborne assault, market, with a ground offensive, garden. Despite its promise and initial success, Operation Market Garden ended up being a costly failure, causing substantial losses for the Allies and delaying their advance into Germany. By the end of the operation, the Allies had only managed to secure some of the targeted bridges, while the bridge at Arnhem remained a bridge too far. The failure to capture Arnhem resulted in the loss of nearly 14,000 Allied troops, and left a sizable contingent of British paratroopers isolated and ultimately captured. Operation Market Garden not only failed in its strategic objectives, but also exposed shortcomings in Allied planning and coordination. Its failure lengthened the war and postponed the liberation of the Netherlands, which continued to suffer under German occupation until May 1945. The operation remains a classic example of military ambition exceeding logistical and tactical capability. Number 15. Battle of Dien Bien Phu, 1954. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu was the climactic confrontation of the First Indochina War between the French Union and the Viet Minh Communist Nationalist Revolutionaries. Taking place between March 13 and May 7, 1954, it concluded with a devastating defeat for the French 
signaling the end of French colonial rule in Indochina and leading to the division of Vietnam. The French, under the command of Colonel Christian de Castri, fortified themselves in a valley in northwest Vietnam with the belief that their superior firepower would deter any large-scale attacks. The Viet Minh, led by General Vo Nguyen Giap, had different plans. By early May, it was evident that French resistance was crumbling. On May 7th, the Viet Minh overran the last French defensive positions, capturing around 11,000 prisoners, many of whom were already wounded and malnourished. The loss at Dien Bien Phu led to the 1954 Geneva Accords, which partitioned Vietnam along the 17th parallel and led to French withdrawal from Indochina. The battle was a watershed moment in the anti-colonial struggle in Asia and had a profound impact on the geopolitics of the region. It emboldened other nationalist movements and set the stage for the subsequent Vietnam War involving the United States. Dien Bien Phu remains a striking example of the failure of superior technology and firepower to secure victory when faced with determined resistance and innovative tactics.